Hello, my name is Seolito Rodriguez, and this is uh, part two of my series exam uh, review. Uh, if you have not seen part one, uh, vis visit uh, my page at cybersecurityoy.com uh, 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 to look at that part. All right, so in this part two, uh, threats and vulnerabilities in the enterprise, um, we will learned uh, or we will look at questions related to this topic so you will learn uh, how to identify potential threats and vulnerabilities uh, understand the different business initiatives and processes that create risk uh, and uh, analyze um, how threats and vulnerabilities factor into different aspects of enterprise risk including areas such as data management, third-party relationships, the systems development life cycle, project management, business continuity and disaster recovery, and also IT operations management and implementation of new technologies. Question one, for a negative event or action to materialize, and cause risk to an organization or a system, what other factor must be present? And the correct answer is B, vulnerability. So vulnerability for a negative event or action, like threat, to materialize and cause risk to an enterprise or a system, a vulnerability must also be present. Question two. Which of the following collects information about different actors and negative events that could exploit the vulnerabilities in a system? And the correct answer is A, which is threat assessment. A threat assessment basically uh, collects information about different actors uh, actors means any event, a hacker, a natural disaster, and negative events that could exploit the vulnerabilities in a system. Question three, which of the following terms describes an entity that initiates a threat? And the correct answer is threat agent. So a threat agent uh, is an entity that initiates a threat. Question four, uh, blank are elements that could influence the likelihood or impact of a threat, exploiting a vulnerability or even uh, influence the ability of the organization to withstand the effects of risk. And the correct answer here is D, risk factors. So risk factors are elements that could influence the likelihood or impact of a threat, exploiting a vulnerability or even influence the ability of the organization to withstand the effects of risk. Question five. All of the following are considered external risk factors affecting business processes, except for which one? And the correct answer here is C, organizational structure. The organization structure would be considered an internal risk factor affecting its business processes, not an external one. Question six, you are managing a project that involves the installation of a new set of systems for the accounting division of your organization. You have just been told that uh, there have been budget cuts and the project will not be able to purchase additional equipment needed for the installation. You now have to find other areas to cut in order to fund the extra equipment. Which element of project management is most affected by this threat? And the answer here is cost. So cost is the element of project management uh, most affected by the threat of not enough 
funding. Question seven. Which of the following is a vulnerability that affects the business processes that deal with third party providers? And the answer here is A. So if you guessed A, that's correct. Lack of a well written service level agreement or SLA. So again, a lack of a well written comprehensive service level agreement is a vulnerability that affects the business processes that deal with third party providers. Question eight, failure to determine exactly what standards or needs a system must meet in terms of functionality, performance, and security is a vulnerability of which of the following phases of the system's development life cycle? And the correct answer is D, requirements. Failure to determine accurate functional performance and security requirements for a system is a vulnerability inherent to the requirements phase of the SDLC, the system's development life cycle. Question nine. As a risk practitioner in a large organization, you have been asked to review the company SDLC model for potential risk areas. The model includes the requirements, design, development, implementation, and disposal phases. Software and systems are moved from the development environment immediately into the production environment and implemented. Which SDLC phase would you recommend that the business add to reduce risk of integration or functionality issues as the system is implemented? And the correct answer is test. Test, test, and test. A test phase introduced into this model would reduce risk by ensuring that a system or software application meets performance and functionality standards before it is introduced into the production environment, potentially eliminating costly issues before they occur. Question 10. Lack of a well-written work breakdown structure uh, document can contribute to a vulnerability that affects which aspect of project management? And the correct answer is C, a scope. Lack of a well-written work breakdown structure document can contribute to a vulnerability that affects a project scope. Question 11. Which of the following are two elements that are critical in planning a threat or vulnerability assessment? And the correct answer here is A, uh, a scope A, a scope and a scale. A scope and a scale are two elements that are critical in planning a threat or vulnerability assessment. So the person conducting the assessment knows exactly what they are assessing and to what level of depth. Question 12. Which of the following is the major risk factor associated with integrating new or emerging technologies into an existing IT infrastructure? And the correct answer is D, interoperability. Interoperability is the major risk factor associated with integrating new or emerging technologies into an existing IT infrastructure, and it covers a wide range of factors which typically include backward compatibility, data format, security mechanisms, and other aspects of system integration. Question 13. You are trying to install a new system in the infrastructure while testing its interoper interoperability with the legacy systems on the network. 
you discover that uh, what may be issues with interoperable security mechanisms. You realize that you must use the strongest common security mechanisms that exist between the two systems. Which of the following related interoperability issues would contribute to increasing the risk involved with integrating this new technology into the existing systems? Choose two. And the correct answers are A, the new system can use only AES 128-bit encryption or higher, and C, the legacy system can use only DES 64-bit encryption. Question 14. Which of the following would be considered a direct internal threat to the IT operations management business process? And the correct answer is B. Unintended consequences from configuration changes. Unintended consequences from the change management process are an internal threat to IT operations. So it's very important that, uh, uh, that change management be uh, well established and follow best practices. Question 15. Which of the following vulnerabilities could affect the management of the IT infrastructure within an organization? Choose all that apply. And the answers here are A. Failure to meet internal service level agreements. Uh, C. Uh, lack of service level agreement with a third party provider. And D lack of resources committed to explore new technologies. Question 16. Which of the following is a vulnerability associated with the integrity aspect of data management? And the correct answer is D. Failure of a DBMS, a database management system, to perform transaction checking on data. Question 17. Which of the following organizational roles is responsible for determining data sensitivity levels as well as who has access to sensitive data? And the correct answer here is C. This is a given. Very easy one. All right. Question 18. Which of the following is a short-term process primarily concerned with protecting personnel, facilities, and equipment immediately following a disaster or major incident? And the correct answer is, obviously, A, a disaster recovery. Disaster recovery. So disaster recovery, again, is a short-term process primarily concerned with protecting personnel, facilities, uh, and equipment immediately following a disaster or a major incident. Question 19. Which of the following would be a vulnerability that stems from the business not identifying its critical assets and processes during the continuity management process? And the correct answer here is B, which is failure to perform a business impact analysis, or BIA. And finally, question 20 of this part two, your business just went through a major storm that flooded your data center. Members of your own recovery team are attempting to salvage equipment, as well as locate critical data backups. No one seems to know exactly what they're supposed to do, and they don't have the right equipment available to them. Additionally, there is no coordinated effort within the team to perform specific tasks. Which of the following vulnerabilities most likely led up to this scenario? And this is an example of D, is, um, which is failure to test the disaster recovery plan. Um, 
it, many times, if you have been following uh, me with this uh, review and in and, and, and this class, I have talked about the importance of uh, a uh, testing the disaster recovery plan. All right, and um, so that was the end of, of this uh, part two. In part three, we will review questions related to identifying and managing risk scenarios. So remember that to uh, view this and other uh, review questions for this certifications, you can visit my page at um, cybersecurityoy.com. See you then.